Hello and welcome to this video on Equilibrium National Output. So what do you think of when you hear the word equilibrium? Well, you might think about things being in balance or you might think about things not being any under any particular pressure to move. And in both senses, you'd be right. In this video, we're going to look at equilibrium from an economics perspective. We're going to look at how you draw an ADS diagram. Then we're going to look at what is meant by equilibrium national output. And then finally, we're going to look at using some ADS diagrams to illustrate changes in the economy. So already we have looked at what is meant by aggregate demand, the components of aggregate demand and the aggregate demand curve, which shows us against the axes of general price level and real GDP the total level of planned expenditure on goods and services produced within a country given the price level. We've also looked at aggregate supply. Again, the same axes, general price level and real GDP. And the aggregate supply curve shows us the quantity of goods and services that producers in an economy are willing and able to supply at a given price level. What we do now is we put the two together in what's known as an aggregate demand aggregate supply diagram or ADS diagram for short. So on our axes, we can plot both aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And then we can really use this as a model to show what might be, uh, show what would be the effect of changes in the economy on various factors. So for example, we might look at if there's a change in the level of demand or a change in the level of supply, what might be the impact on inflation? And we would look at that by looking at the impact on this axis over here. We might look at the impact of changes in the economy in terms of demand and supply on economic growth. And for that, we would look at this axis down here. But we can go a little bit further. We can look at what might be changes in unemployment because we can make the assumption that if more is being produced, then unemployment would probably fall. We can also have a look at the impact of what's going on in the balance of payments in terms of how that affects aggregate demand and how that might affect aggregate supply. We can also look at what uh, impact the government might have on the economy. So if government increased spending, what impact might that have on aggregate demand? But also if they increase something that benefits the businesses within the economy, what impact that might have on aggregate supply. So it's a really useful diagram and a really useful model for us to analyze what's going on in the economy. So let's have a look at some examples of how we might use this diagram. First of all, we have the level of demand in the economy as indicated here, and we have the level of aggregate supply as indicated by here. The general price level and the level of output Let's imagine that the current price level in the economy is price level one. What would be the implications for this in terms of the level of demand and the level of supply within the economy? Well, at price level one, the amount of or the planned spending within the economy would be a Y1 level of spending. Let's look at the planned output within the economy. At price level one, the planned, the planned output would be Y2. So in this economy, at this price level, we would have a situation of planned overproduction because at this price level, the amount that the businesses were planned to produce is greater than the planned spending by um, or buyers within the economy. In this situation where we have overproduction, what we would predict as economists to happen is that we would expect there would be pressure in the economy for the price level to fall. When we have got excess supply, that tends to bid down the prices of goods and services, so we would expect the price level to fall. A reminder that a fall or a change in price level would lead to a movement along the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves. Let's have a look at a second example now. Let's imagine the price level was at price level one, but actually this was a lot lower. At this price level, the planned spending within the economy would be Y2, and the planned level of output within the economy would be Y1. In this situation, we have underproduction as the planned spending exceeds the planned output. 
What would we predict or would expect to happen as economists? We would expect there to be pressure within the economy for price levels to rise. Where demand exceeds the level of supply, we would expect prices to be bid up. Now let's imagine a scenario where the economy is at general price level one. Now in this situation, the amount that is planned to be spent is exactly the same that the amount that is planned to be produced. So is there any pressure here for the economy to move? Well, the answer would be no. And as a result, we would say that this economy is in an equilibrium position. There is no pressure for the price level or for the level of output to change. So equilibrium is established when aggregate demand intersects with aggregate supply, i.e. planned output and demand are imbalanced. So what matters is whether total planned demand for goods and services is close to the actual production from domestic and external sources. When that is the case, we would say that the economy is in equilibrium and Y1 here would be the equilibrium national income. So equilibrium national income is where planned aggregate demand equals planned aggregate supply. OK, we've looked at our first two objectives now. Now let's go on to look at our third one, which is to say, can we illustrate how change in the economy or can we illustrate change in the economy using this model? So let's imagine our economy is in uh, equilibrium and we have a price level of one and a level of national income of Y1. Now, if there was an increase in aggregate demand within our economy, how would we illustrate that? And can we predict what is likely to happen if there's an increase in aggregate demand? Well, an increase in aggregate demand would move the economy from a price level one output level of one to a price level two output level two. So the economy would move from this equilibrium position here to this equilibrium position here. So an increase in AD causes an expansion of aggregate supply, a movement along the supply curve and a higher equilibrium level of output. An outward shift of aggregate demand will bring about a cyclical rise in output. And also we would note probably a rise in employment as more is being produced. Let's also have a look at what would be the impact of a reduction in aggregate demand. Well, in this scenario, it would be the opposite direction. A reduction in aggregate demand would lead to a lower price level and a lower level of national income, Y2. So a decrease in AD causes a contraction along the AS curve and a lower equilibrium national output. And this is the diagram we would typically use to illustrate or analyze the cause of a recession. A demand efficient recession would be indicated here where our fall in GDP is indicated by Y1 to Y2, often accompanied with deflation. We can also use this model to look at impacts or, or changes in aggregate supply as well. So if there's an increase in aggregate supply, we would expect the economy to move to a new position of equilibrium at price level two and output level Y2. So an increase in aggregate supply causes an expansion along the AD curve and a higher equilibrium level of national output. And this may be caused by perhaps lower unit costs, which could help to increase businesses' profits. A reduction in aggregate supply, we would illustrate like this. This time, decreasing the level of output and also raising the price level. A reduction in aggregate supply would cause a contraction along the AD curve and a lower equilibrium level of national output. And this may be caused by a rise in unit costs, which might lead to lower business profits. We could also illustrate changes in AD and AS looking at the classical long run aggregate supply curve and the Keynesian long run aggregate supply curve. So, for example, an increase in demand under the classical long run supply curve would just lead to an increase in inflation with no change in outputs. We can also look at if the long run aggregate supply curve changed. So an increase in the um, amount the economy could produce in the long run would lead to a high level of output 
and a lower price level. The same for the Keynesian one. Again, an increase in aggregate demand, we can illustrate the impact of this. Here, an increase in demand would lead to, again, a higher level of uh, price, a higher price level, but, all, but this time also a higher level of output. And again, we could say what the impact would be if the economy, the maximum the economy could produce, increased as well from YFE to YFE1. This would shift the aggregate supply curve to the right, and we would move to an economy in equilibrium at price level three. Let's look at a few scenarios. I'm going to ask you to look at this scenario and have a think about whether it would impact the aggregate demand curve, the aggregate supply curve, and in which direction those curves would be shifting. So the first scenario we're going to think about is higher production costs. So for example, if energy costs were increased, which curve would that affect and which direction it would it shift? If you want to pause the video for a second, have a quick sketch, and then we'll see what we think. Well, higher production costs would result in a reduction in aggregate supply. This would cause a rise in inflation and a fall in national income. What about a natural disaster? Which um, curve would this affect and what would be the impact? Again, pause the video, have a quick sketch and then we'll have a look. A natural disaster would reduce how much the economy could produce potentially in the long run. So this would be shifting the long run aggregate supply curve to the left. And here I've chosen the, the classical long run supply curve. And that would result in a higher level of a higher price level and a lower level of output. Our third scenario, what about a fall in interest rates? Would that affect AD or AS? And how would we alter the curves? Well, a fall in interest rates would normally increase consumption and investment, causing an increase in aggregate demand, which would move our economy from this equilibrium position. There would be pressure to move the economy to expand along the AS curve and move to this position in equilibrium. So uh, a high level of price and a high level of output. An increase in national minimum wage, what impact might that have? Well. An increase in the national minimum wage would normally impact on businesses' costs, be an increase in their costs, so a reduction in supply. The impact of this would be a higher price level and a lower level of output. What about an increase in house prices? Well, an increase in house prices, normally as a result of the wealth effect, would lead to increased consumption, which would increase demand, increasing the price level, and the level of real GDP. Finally, what about an increase in investment spending by businesses? Now, this is a bit of a funny one because an increase in investment spending would cause an increase in aggregate demand. But actually, you might go a bit further and think, well, actually, if businesses increase their level of investment, then in theory, businesses should be able to produce more. So the maximum potential level of output should also increase. So there would also be a double shift and the second shift would be a shift in supply. So actually our economy would move from this position here to this position here, firstly to an increase in aggregate demand through higher business investment spending and secondly because of an increase in supply because that investment spending helps businesses to produce more. So our final point there is that often um, the change within the economy may have an impact on demand and supply, in which case you would need to shift to both curves. So that's something to look out for and consider when you're trying to illustrate changes in the economy and their impact on the price level on real GDP, on unemployment and so on. So in this video, we've looked at how you draw an ADS diagram. We've looked at what is meant by equilibrium national output. And finally, we've looked at how we might illustrate changes in the economy using our ADS diagrams. That's it. Thanks very much.